Hey, what is up everyone? It's Josh again. So I've been trying some new things out, and today I'll be showing you how I made this USB-C to USB-C cable for one of my keyboards. Before we get started, make sure to like the video if you learned something new, and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more custom cable and mechanical keyboard content like this. With that being said, let's hop right into this video. Alright, so starting off, I wanted to share some things that I learned through my research in figuring out how these cables worked in the first place. I do have a degree in computer engineering, but I barely passed my classes, so feel free to take this however you want to. But anyways, let's look at this diagram right here. We have a USB 2 implementation of a USB-C connection. I don't want to bore you with all these details and what it means, but something to keep in mind of here are these 5.1k ohm resistors that are connected to the CC2 and CC1 ports here. Looking at the USB-C USB documentation, I'll be putting these links in the description below. We see how the CC1 and CC2 ports are detected upon cable insertion. And from my knowledge, the host device or the computer that you plug in your keyboard into needs these to detect that device connected to it. So what we need here is a USB-C connector with those 5.1K resistors. And that's what we'll be working on here today. Here is a zoomed in image of the connectors that we'll be using here today. They're actually made to the 3.0 spec, but we'll be using the four connections necessary to make it work with our keyboard. And you do see here that we have our resistor present on this specific um, USB-C connector here. So we'll be using the ground, the D+, D-, and voltage as the connections to make our keyboard work with our device. I'm going to go ahead and start soldering our cable to the USB-C connector here. If you haven't seen any of my other custom cable videos before, make sure to check out the playlist to learn more about custom cables. And this should make a lot of sense how to sleeve, strip, and put these cables together. I'm going to use the same USB-C diagram that I use for just about all the other cables I make. Technically, the D plus and D minus are switched to specifications, but this is just the way I have learned to put these together. I'm going to speed up this video just to make sure this video isn't too long. So here I just add some tin to my USB-C connector here and make sure you don't make bridge any connections there. Then add some tin to the wires. And then we're going to go ahead and put this all together. I will say this is probably not the cleanest solder job, but we're looking for functionality here. And um, this is probably one of my first times working with one of these connectors. But here I'm going to go and solder these individual wires. If not sure if you can see, but I actually skipped one of the pins I won't be using for our connection here. So here we have it done, and we have a finished USB-C soldered connection right here. Use the same USB-C connector to solder on the other side of the cable. As we're doing that, I'm going to show off some configurations of how this will and will not work. In here, we see that if we have the resistor on both sides of the cable, you should be fine. If you have the resistor on the computer side and not the keyboard side, you should still be fine in that case because your host will detect the connection. In the case that you don't have the resistor on the computer side, it won't detect your connection and your device will not work. And also, without resistor on both sides, it, it won't work as well. What we see here, I'm going to use the resistor on both sides of the cable to ensure that our connection would work both ways. It's a good idea to make sure that you test your cable before putting on the housing, but I feel pretty confident in this connection, so I'm just going to add a little heat shrink to my solder points and then add the shell to each side of the connector. I take my time here. You want to make sure that you do slide this on very nicely and crimp them as cleanly as possible to make sure they're nice and rounded to have a nice finish once your cable is all done. So I'm going to take my time and do this and make sure this is all nice and secure. And I hope to be able to use this cable for a very long time. To wrap things up, I'm going to go ahead and add heat shrink to both sides of my cable. I'm going to use the color blue because I feel like it goes pretty well with our color scheme here. But I'm probably going to use this cable for my laptop and my keyboard, so it's probably going to be unplugged and replugged in a lot. And it's going to be nice to be used this cable interchangeably on both sides, as well as the heat shrink should make it a little more durable as I unplug it and plug it in many times. So yeah, that is just the final step to make sure it's all clean, and we'll test it out right after this. All right, I have my finished cable here, and look, looks pretty cool and matches my keyboard here. This is the drop CTRL with some like tie out keycaps, by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the USB-C to my laptop. I'm using a Lenovo X1 Carbon. 
then I'm going to plug the other side of the USB-C to my keyboard. It's kind of fine to port here. It's a little, a little hard to find sometimes, <laughs> but it gets plugged in. This one has some pretty massive RGB, so we'll see that initially. I'm going to type in some numbers here to make sure that's working properly. And it seems we have a working cable. All right, so here we have our final finished cable. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> but anyways, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you did like it, make sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel already, make sure to subscribe for more channel like this in the future. If you want any of the parts that I use for this build right here, I'll have them available in the cruise control store and the link will be in the description below. And that includes the USB-C connector with the resistors on it as well. But anyways, that's all for me today. I hope you liked the video and make wise choices. All right, okay, bye.